Good morning, friends and family. Welcome to Freedom Fellowship. Uh, we have three different experiences right now going on. Uh, one is this, it's the online experience. The second is our parking lot experience. And the third is the in-person experience. And the greatest thing about this is it's an opportunity for the body of Christ, this church, to join together and worship God. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube and like and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, let's all join together in worship now as we get this opportunity to worship our Heavenly Father. Let's worship. Father God, we come to you today. And we thank you for who you are, Father God. That you are a faithful God. That you are faithful even when we are not, Lord. And we come to you, Lord, in these times knowing that you are faithful, Lord, and we say, blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you and praise you for all you've done, for all you're doing, and for all you're going to do, Lord. In Jesus' name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessing be your name. Blessing be your name. When I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessing be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessing be the name of the Lord. Blessing be your name. Blessing be the name of the Lord. Blessing be your glory. Blessing be your name When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessing be your name Blessing be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessing be your name Blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be in you. 
your presence And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you Sing it again, I'm caught up in your presence Caught up in your presence And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave I'm not here Blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry But I'm for singing another song Take me back to where we start I open up my heart to you And I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I forget that you're enough take me back to where we start I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence Just want you. Say, I'm caught up in your presence. I'm caught up in your presence. And I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want. I'm not here for blessing God And I'm not here for blessings and Jesus you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you Say I just want you I just want you and nothing else and nothing else and nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else Jesus nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else, yes, Lord, and nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. 
height this morning, Lord, and nothing else, and nothing else, Jesus, nothing else. Say, I'm caught up, I'm caught up in your presence, and I just want to sit here at your feet. For blessing God and I'm not here for blessing Jesus you don't know me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you say more than anything One more time. More than anything that you can do, I just want you. spoke the word you were singing over me you have been so so kind to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't hurt it. 
don't deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Still I'm found Leaves the 99 I couldn't hurt it I don't deserve it But still you give yourself away For the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God And you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie, you won't tear down, coming after me. Father, we thank you for that truth today. That, Lord, no matter where we are, no matter how good things are, no matter how bad things are, Lord, that you are right by our side, Lord. That, Lord, even when we forsake you, you come after us, Lord. You come running for us. And so, Lord, we thank you and praise you. We come to you and worship you today, Lord. Lord, would you just lay bare our hearts where we are in our homes today, Lord. Lord, lay bare fear, lay bare insecurities, Lord. Lord, lay bare all the things that would keep us from you, Lord. And show us your truth. Holy Spirit, come and speak your truth today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, Freedom. We're just a couple of weeks away from live streaming where we will all be able to enjoy the same worship experience together. But as Nathan said earlier, we are still one unified church. Some of us in person, some of us in the parking lot, and then of course you right there in your home. So I just want to say welcome. It is so good to join in worship with you today. Okay, now be sure and have your device in hand because we want to get some chat going just like we do every week. And this week we're going to do 
some of the thumbs up, thumb down, thumbs down stuff again. Last week, one thing I shared was things that I've learned over the last three months. And there are a number of you who also shared through social media some of the things that you've learned. And I thought it would be fun to share some of those. Now, we had one family in our church, young family. Austin and Amber Frosto had a brand new baby boy, Kyler Lane. And Austin, Amber, we are so excited for you. But this is one thing Amber put. She said, what I've learned is that I'm totally fine basically never leaving the house. Not having a vehicle, being in quarantine, and having a newborn have been really great reasons to stay at home. Most of all, being a mommy is the best. <laughs> okay, everybody, give Amber a thumbs up. What, how exciting. All right, here's another comment someone put. What I've learned, I don't have to use as much toilet paper as I thought I needed. <laughs> That's great. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, here's another, and it's simply one word. He said, what I've learned, forgiveness. Okay, now I don't know the story behind that, but I think we all have a few of our stories that have probably come up in the last three months. Someone else put, what I've learned is a whole lot of strength and a whole lot of patience. And then one final thing, uh, someone put this, what I've learned is I need more Jesus and less of the world's input. Okay, everybody gives a good thumbs up on that one too. So. I encourage you, have your device in hand or have your Bible in hand and turn to Isaiah 55. And you really will want these today because it's going to be a little bit different. We are still heeding this word that the Lord spoke to us, the word return. And there is more that the Lord wants to impart to us from this chapter, Isaiah 55. But to catch it today, I want us to read through the chapter in its scope. So now, let's dive in. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. And you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. Okay, we have this word from the Lord, this word return. And last week we looked in this chapter and we heard God's invitation of come. And we talked about what it is that he's inviting us to. But there's a whole other aspect of this return that it, we see in this chapter of Isaiah 55. And we dare not miss it because it is one of the foundational hinge points that everything else in this chapter rests upon. And it's this, it's return to the word. And let me even say it this way. Let me say, love the word. In fact, grab your device, grab your, and, and type in the chat right now, love the word, love the word. See, as you're doing that, here's what I believe. I believe that God today wants to impart a fresh new love for his word in his people. Okay. See, as I look into this, there are some things in this chapter that absolutely capture me in what they reveal about the goodness of God. And the first thing is this, 
those who God invites. See, right in verse 1, we hear the first group. He invites the thirsty and he invites those with absolutely no resource. Now, has that ever been you? Or could it be maybe that's you even right now? So do you hear God's invitation? Come, come. But then in verses 6 and 7, we hear the second group that he invites. And he invites the wicked and the unrighteous. Now, it absolutely blows me away that the perfect, holy God of this universe would invite those two. Now, the wicked, they are those who have intentional evil actions. Now, come on. We've all been there, right? Um, intentional anger or intentional pride or arrogance trying to promote ourselves, intentional unforgiveness or impurity or downright selfishness. The list could go on and on. But then the unrighteous, see, those are the, that is that sin nature that makes us so very opposite of everything God, where we couldn't even be righteous in our own efforts, even if we tried. Now, I know I can definitely relate to that. See, recently we purchased a duplex and we renovated it. Um, and there were a number of work crews that came in during the process and most of the work crews were great. But there was this one work crew, let, let's just say they were less than adequate. Okay, it made me mad, mad. So in, in all my pastor uh, mindset, you know what I thought? My first reaction was this, man, I hope their boss fires them. <laughs> And uh, I don't think that was very righteous. Now, yes, they need to be held accountable, but uh, I don't think that was very righteous. See, outside of Holy Spirit in us, then so many of our reactions are so fallen. And so many of us, you know, we, we are caught by the reactions of present day society. And those reactions, so many of them are so fallen. <laughs> But here's the amazing thing, the God of this universe, the holy God, he invites us to come. That's what it says right there, verses six and seven. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn or return to the Lord. So the first thing that captures me are those who God invites. But the next thing is this, is all that God wants to give. I mean, it, the overflowing goodness of the heart of God. Now, and we see it all throughout the entire chapter. So journey with me because you go back to verse one and you read this. First, God wants to give water to the thirsty. He wants to give milk to the young. He wants to give wine to those who need strength. He wants to give bread. He wants to give that which really does satisfy. He wants to give what is good. He wants to give the richest affair so even you and I can delight in it. <laughs> he wants us to live. He wants us to experience life, to know life. He wants us to engage in His everlasting covenant. Now, as in contrast to that which never really does satisfy, he wants us to know his faithful love. He wants to be found. He wants to be near. He wants us to know his mercy and he wants to freely pardon us. And he wants things in your life to bud and flourish. And he wants to give provision, seed for the sower, bread for the eater. Now, to be honest, there's a part of me, I'm a little bit hesitant to focus on those things because there is such a selfish entitlement in our society. And honestly, there's a fair amount of, uh, part of Christianity that they are driven more by consumerism than by surrender and by this attitude of we owe our all to this amazing God. But yet I bring this up, all that he wants to give us, because we can't miss the overflowing goodness of the heart of God in all this. See, he makes this declaration of himself in Exodus 34. He says, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And then we get to Isaiah 55 and the language is just dripping, drenched with this same language. 
So we see those who God invites, and then we see all that God wants to give. But then we get to verse 11, and verse 11 really is a hinge verse because everything that came before it uh, leans into it, and everything that's going to come after is directed back to it. And verse 11 says this, it says, so is my word. Now take your device and just type in the chat, my word. (laughs) And that's what the Lord says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Love the word. Love the word. See, when you think about all the things that God wants to give, every single one of those things is rooted in the word. I mean, the word is living water. The word is milk or wine or, or bread. See, Jesus knew this. He even spoke it. He says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And I want you to think about that. Think about bread and that which satisfies. You know, there was a time in my life, times past, where I ate way too much fast food. Now, the crazy thing, I would eat big, big meals of fast food. But then just a couple hours later, I would be hungry. And I think, why is that? But my stomach, it was crying out, come on, give me something that I can work with. Now, there is a pandemic of malnutrition among the people of God. Because too many times we stuff ourselves with things that cannot nourish our souls. But listen to me, God's word is bread. (sighs) And then his word is where we find him. His word is the path that draws us near, draws us into his presence. His word is where we find mercy revealed. His word enlightens us to his higher ways, his higher thoughts. There is no other revelation except his word and then the Holy Spirit making his word real to our hearts. Love the word. Love the word. And then verse 10, it says this. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and did not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower, bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. And listen, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Listen to me, we've got to catch this. God's word alone is powerful in our lives, in our hearts. And if we want to see the desires of God released and the purposes of God released, there's one thing that's going to bring that about. The word of God. Love the word. Okay, let me tell you the difference between my effort and God's word. So here we are in uh, the Texas Panhandle. We're in this dry heat wave. Now, I water my grass often. I mean, I really water it. I don't want to see my next water bill. But still, I go out and I look and my grass, it looks up at me and it says, come on, don't you have something better? But then, this, this past Monday night, God sent his rain. And uh, what a good rain it was. And see, his rain had already been through the water cycle and it had been refilled with nutrients and it had been infused with the ionization from the lightning. I mean, God's so amazing the way he does all that with his rain. And then Monday, he so graciously came and God watered my lawn. And then Tuesday morning, I I get up and just a few hours later, I walk out and my grass It looks altogether different. My grass looks happy. (laughs) I mean, wasn't that the case for you also? The grass looking happy. And here's what God says. He says, that rain, so is my word in your life. Love the word. Love the word. 
Now see, and, and, and we cannot miss the imperatives that God spoke early in the chapter. Because he, first he said, come, in verse 1. But then we get to verse 2, and he speaks this. He says, listen, listen to me. And that's the Hebrew word Shema. And it really is uh, uh, repeated two different times. Shema, Shema. And it's repeated to get our attention. Listen, listen to me. Eat what is good. And if you listen to my words, you will delight in the richest affair. And then verse 3 it says, give ear. Now let me tell you the picture of give ear. It's a picture of a mom with a newborn baby, you know, and the, the baby's off in the other room taking a nap. And, and uh, there could be all this noise in the house, the TV going, the dishwasher running, people having conversations. But then all of a sudden you, you, you see the mom and the mom perks up and listens. <laughs> it's like, ah, my baby's crying. And the mom hears it. See, the mom has that ability to cut through all the noise and to give ear, to incline her ear. We've all seen it, the moms. And what God says is, cut through the noise. I mean, is there any noise in your life? Is there any noise in our world? God says, cut through the noise. Hear my word. And then find life. <laughs> okay. Love the word. Can you type that yet one more time in the chat? Love the word. Now I have a few questions I want to ask us all. And a couple of them are a little bit tough. The first one's this. Why is it in general that many believers don't have time for God's word? Something's wrong. Here's the next question. Why is it many believers have no problem giving a significant amount of time to social media or to news agencies or to talk radio or to some other voice of society? But uh, if they give 10 minutes to God's word, they feel like that's laborious. Something's wrong. Okay, so let, let's ask some good questions. What if, what if, we really saw God's word as the sustenance it is. What if we really did interact with God's word like it is living water, like it is milk, wine, bread that our souls desperately need day after day after day? What if? Or what if? What if we saw God's word as relevant to every area of our lives. I mean, relationships, your job, finances, uh, the past, the future, uh, depression, loneliness, anxiety. I mean, what, what is it you're struggling through right now? What if? What if? And then finally, what if even when God's word gets hard, because we all have those times where just reading certain portions of this get a little bit hard. What if we just wrestle through it anyway, remembering that God's ways are higher and God's thoughts are higher, and it's going to take us some effort to grasp him, but it'll be so worth it. Love the word love the word. So I said at the very beginning that I believe what God wants to do today is how he wants to impart a fresh new love for his word in his people. And so what I want to do is I want to pray for you, even right there where you are in your home. And I'm going to pray a prayer of impartation. And if you want to receive this kind of love, just, just make a simple gesture. Just hold your hands. It doesn't have to be a big gesture, but just like you're receiving. And let me pray this prayer over you. Let's pray. Dear God, I come and I just pray for each one of us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word, that it really is a living word, an active word, and that every bit of your word, it never, ever returns void. And so God, here's my prayer for, for us, your people. Would you please impart a true love for your word? 
God, where our hearts just connect in a fresh, new, vital, thriving way. Where we get up in the morning or we go to bed at night and we think, I I, I cannot go through this day without spending time in God's Word. But then, Lord, I also pray this. There are those days that that joy just may not be there. And it's more of a discipline. And in those days, will you give us the discipline of the Holy Spirit to just get in the Word and give it our best anyway? And then, Lord, I pray, open our ears. Let us hear that, to give ear to your word. And I pray that as we open it, that things in there would make sense. And even if we have to wrestle for a while to to make it make sense, God, and we have to give our ear to that place of the Holy Spirit, Lord, would you please let your word come alive and make sense to us? God, in the times we're living in, there are so many voices. And we need to still those voices and give ear to you, to your spirit and your word. Dear God, impart your grace and favor on your people to do that. We receive, we receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, right there in your homes, here's what I encourage. Go into talk time. The question today is very simple. It's this, what do you get excited about from Isaiah 55? And then after some talk time, I encourage you, take communion together. Now, thank you so much.